Hi, I'm Evan Scott with Sweet Magazine. Uh, this month's DIY is uh, something from my backyard. One thing I wanted to do is be able to throw more parties out here and, and uh, around the hot tub or eventually I want to make a tiki bar or something like that. But one thing I wanted was like a little fire pit or something that uh, when the weather's cool people can sit around and uh, enjoy themselves over a bunch of conversation and uh, good drinks. But uh, looking at the local uh, hardware stores and the catalogs, you know, these chimeneas are you know, really expensive. I don't know how often I'm going to use this. And they're also kind of big and bulky. You know, I, it's going to be hard enough to carry one of those things around, much less when it's full of ashes and whatnot. And the other thing that's getting kind of popular are these fire pits that you can buy. But they're like you know, a couple hundred dollars sometimes, and they're in big tables and whatnot. I wanted something that was a little bit more portable, a heck of a lot cheaper. And uh, here's my solution. I bought one of these. This is nothing more than a flower pot. It's one of those terracotta ones you can buy. I bought this one from the, uh, the Big W. No, not the Big W in the uh, Oval Office. This is uh, one of those uh, discount store specials. Bought it in their garden, garden department. It cost me about 20 bucks. And uh, it's nothing more than a big flower pot. Got a hole in the bottom to drain water and whatnot. Um, but just to make this completely safe, since it does have a hole in the bottom, uh, what I do, is I put down some bricks for the feet to sit on. Also, one more brick in the middle so any ashes that fall through fall on a nice fire brick. Gotta have safety. Gotta have safety. So, there's a the start. Okay. Yes, there's a hole in the bottom of it, and that's good because it lets air through and helps the fire. But when you pile enough wood on top of it, it's not going to breathe very well. So, I went to the store and bought some of this. It's called expanded metal. Uh, what the name is doesn't mean much, but it's like a metal grating. It's very heavy. So uh, they call it like 18 gauge or something like that. And uh, you can use these in fireplaces and whatnot. But what I did, I found something that uh, just sit in the bottom, kind of like that. It's doesn't about the right size, a flower pot or something like that, to show that okay, it sits in the bottom. And I used that as a pattern. Traced it out here with a marker. Cut. Grating. Drops right in there. Now it holds the, all the embers up off the bottom, allows the air to breathe. Uh, so what are you going to cut it with? Well, you can either stay tuned next month's DIY. I'll show you how to cut one of these with a special little tool. Or that cute neighbor who works on his motorcycle across the street, ask him to help you. Maybe he'll have a little saber saw and cut that up for you. There you go. So now you want to start your fire. Well, you can use matches, you can use lighter fluid or kerosene or a whole bunch of other things. There's a lot of things you can use to start a fire. I sometimes like to use these things. It's like a big wax candle lighter stick thing. It's even got a little striker on the end of it. You can strike it and there you go. Just throw this into the bottom of your pit here. Start putting wood on top of it and there you go, you have a fire. Of course, there's another way you can light your fire. Use one of these. It's one of those artificial logs that you can buy. Yeah, I know. Some people say, well, what's the purpose of you're going to use artificial wood? But, you know, they're easy, much less ash. They can, you can use these to start a bigger fire with bigger wood, and it's a lot easier. You have to use the kindling and everything you would have to with one of these. So, a little easier way to go and uh, have a lazy man's fireplace. Oh, well, forgot one more thing. You want to keep any wood that's in there and dry, so I usually uh, to keep the metal grating in there from rusting and everything. I use an old trash can lid. Just, you know, make sure the fire's out and it's cooled down first. It gets kind of messy if you don't. Well, there you go. For less than $30, you can have your own fire pit. I'm Evan Scott for Sweet Magazine's DIY. Now, this thing could just start itself. There, much better. Something's still missing, though. Oh, Evan! Ah. Hi, honey. Hi. What do you got? I figured since you were out here doing all this hard work, I'd bring the treats and ah. I got some marshmallows for us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just to break this thing in, I love that. Oh, yes, very nice. Can't wait to sit around this at night when it gets all chilly and like snuggle up to you and 
burn some marshmallows? <laughs> and some smoke too. <laughs> oh well, that's part of it. Oh, I got one burning. <laughs> I got one burning. It went out. Oh boy. <laughs> You're cooking faster than mine. I don't know why. Because I put mine right down on the fire. <laughs> <laughs>